Welcome to the Virtual Cemetery Happy Hour. I'm Sharon Peka. I'm a university professor. I'm also the author of Women Writers Buried in Virginia 2021, which was published by the History Press. Um, I run River City Cemeterians, which is a group of individuals in Richmond, Virginia, who get together and we go to historic cemeteries and we love to travel and see cemeteries. But tonight I have several out of town guests and they also like to go to cemeteries and they like to write about their travels. So I'm really excited to introduce everyone, but I think I'm gonna start with some individual introductions because you all know yourselves the best. And if you could just say who you are and then how you, your area, where you're from and how you relate to cemeteries. Lauren, why don't you start? I'm Lauren Rhodes. I live in San Francisco where there are no active cemeteries. And uh, I'm the author of 199 Cemeteries to See Before You Die and Wish You Were Here, uh, Adventures in Cemetery Travel. Trips Great. off the tongue. <laughs> Chris? Yeah, I'm Chris LeMay West. I am an uh, expatriate Californian, formerly of San Francisco, currently in Vermont. And I guess several things drawn me to cemeteries. I've always been interested in kind of paranormal and unexplained phenomenon. I've also always been given to kind of philosophical, what's it all about, morose speculation. Uh, and I'm also have a deep set interest in religion and comparative spirituality. And so as part of that, I like religious iconography. And so cemeteries get that from every direction. <laughs> Absolutely. Denise? I am Denise Tapscott. I was actually born in San Francisco, but now I'm in hey. Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, I am the author of Gypsy Kisses and Voodoo Wishes, which takes place in New Orleans, Louisiana. And that is where I first came across visiting cemeteries for the first time. That's awesome. I love New Orleans cemeteries. And I was just talking about going on a trip there soon, hopefully. Well, tonight, our focus on the cemetery happy hour is the forthcoming book, Death's Garden Revisited, Relationships with Cemeteries. And this is an anthology of personal essays about how the authors connect with cemeteries and um, graveyards. Lauren, could you sh share a little bit about your decision to make this a Kickstarter and a small press? Yeah, I... I published the initial volume of Death's Garden in the 90s, um, just after I had started a process. And uh, it was our second book. We didn't really know what we were doing. So I made choices I wouldn't make now, but I've always wanted to do a second edition of that. And uh, so all these years later, the press is still crawling along, but I, I wanted to make a book where I have full control. Everything is going to be absolutely perfect, absolutely the way I want it. The uh, contributors were all specifically chosen. Um, the images are going to be glorious. They're so beautiful, the photographs for this book. And uh, I chose to do a Kickstarter because I like the idea of building an audience for a book before it comes out. Um, often with the small press, you put a book out and then you run around trying to find an audience for it. But the Kickstarter allows us to get some buzz going, some excitement, and people to pre-order the book. So we know going in, we've already sold 100 copies. And, you know, that's, that's a great place to start. Absolutely. Chris, can you tell me what your piece is about and also why you chose to have it part of this collection? Uh, sure. Yeah, my piece is about visiting a cemetery in Arkansas as part of uh, summer visits we always had with my grandfather, you know, coming out from California, we would do these big cross country visits to one or the other set of grandparents almost every summer. Um, and he happened to be a caretaker at the cemetery. So that was the reason we were kind of hanging out there that day. Um, so as far as being in this anthology, uh, the very first thing I had published when I started trying to be a little more serious about writing was actually in the um, Dear Departed Morbid Curiosity, uh, which was Lauren's old magazine. And um, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for anything she does because of that. And so I was very excited to take part in this project. I love it. Denise, same question. Can you tell us a little bit about your piece and why you're connected to this anthology? 
Uh, my piece is about visiting uh, the St. Louis uh, Cemetery in New Orleans, um, specifically because I was doing research for my novel, Gypsy Kisses and Voodoo Wishes, and I had to see Marie Laveau's tomb. I had to be there. And uh, when uh, Lauren reached out, I was like, I would love to share my experience of like walking around and how I felt and and stuff like that. I don't want to give too much away, but it was it was really exciting. It was so much fun. And, and I recommend everyone, whenever you go to New Orleans, you have to go there. It's amazing. I totally agree with you. <laughs> also for the cemetery happy hour, I ask everyone to bring a cocktail, a beverage, something that connects with their piece. So my piece is actually on Fred Gwynn um, and marking his unmarked grave with flowers. And that's in Sandy Mount and um, Churchyard in Maryland. So most people know Fred Gwynn as Herman Munster. That's probably the most popular role. Um, you might also know him from Pet Cemetery. Um, when I mentioned to my brother I was going out there, he quickly started like giving my cousin Vinny lines. Uh, so people know Fred Gwynn mostly as an actor, but he studied portrait painting. He was in the... Um, in the Navy in World War II, he attended the New York Phoenix School of Design, Harvard University, and he was also an author of children's books. So in, you know, as a professor, my research is actually on adolescent literature. So there's just, I love when things kind of connect, um, when both of my worlds like intertwine. So he was sophisticated and complex, but in this like, um, 1982 interview when a reporter asked him about his favorite role he you know was talking about plays and all these very sophisticated things and then he started laughing and he was like and I might as well tell you the truth that old Herman Monster much as I try I can't stop liking the fellow and I just <laughs> think that that's so great about him so I will start with my beverage tonight um i got this ginormous mug for Herman Munster. So I went very silly on the outside um, because I have flowers that I marked his grave because it is an unmarked grave. I went with this little umbrella with a floral theme. And then because he is so sophisticated for Fred Gwynn, it's not Herman Munster's grave, it's Fred Gwynn. I went with a sophisticated cocktail. So I went with an old fashioned um, with, you know, whiskey, water, bitters, and, you know, just sort of some fruit. Lauren, tell me about your drink. Let me get it up here, there. Um, I started with uh, uh, Creme de Mirror because blackberries grow wild in San Francisco. And uh, I wanted something that was San Francisco in flavor. Um, I, I'm calling this drink, this is this brand new recipe that I worked all week on, uh, the Ghost of Long Mountain, the Ghost of Lone Mountain Cemetery. There, I got that out. Um, Lone Mountain Cemetery was in the heart of San Francisco, uh, was, built in the 1860s. And it was at that point on the edge of town, but it was meant to be a permanent resting place for, for all of the people who survived the gold rush, the silver rush, um, the early years of San Francisco. And of course we're on a peninsula. So the city grew out around the cemetery and eventually the real estate uh, people started to take a look at it and think, you know, wouldn't that be better if that was houses or shops or whatever? So the cemeteries were evicted in the early years of the 20th century, that the final bones were moved in the 1940s. But the land where Lone Mountain Cemetery stood became the University of San Francisco. And there are reports that for decades afterwards, bones would wash up through the ground. So I, you can't see it because I can't tip my glass, but I have a skull-shaped ice cube in there to <laughs> represent the bones washing out. I love it. Chris, what do you have? Yes, um, I'd like to open by apologizing for having the least interest in glassware of anyone here. But uh, <laughs> I, I think what I put together is kind of an amalgamation of myself and my piece, um, which is maybe fitting for what the piece is about. 
which you all will see one day when you read it. Um, so not giving anything away because it's in the title. The piece involves cemeteries that have strawberries in them <laughs> and, or a cemetery that has strawberries in it. So I use strawberries as a base and I found some uh, recipes online for strawberry lemonade from scratch, like using actual lemons and strawberries. Because one thing I always associate with going to visit my grandfather in the summers is like sitting on his porch in Arkansas and just seeing the big thunder clouds roll in in the afternoon and sitting there with a big glass of lemonade, you know, it's a very Southern kind of thing. Um, so I did all that and I am actually in recovery. I have not had a drink since 2006. I had plenty of drinks before that. So, you know, no need to feel sorry for me. A whole lot, a whole, whole lot. <laughs> so, and, and alcohol was <laughs> not required for this happy hour. <laughs> yes, true. So this is a mocktail. It's a strawberry lemonade mocktail and um, also includes basil, which I thought was very strange, but it was in the recipe and I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. The only other uh, ingredients are soda water and they had a couple of choices of what kind of sweetener you could use. And I actually ended up going with maple syrup, which was one of the choices because I'm in Vermont and our whole existence is based around maple syrup. That totally makes sense. I love it. And do you like it? <laughs> It is, I mean, unsurprisingly, it's a little bitter and tart. I think I could have probably put more of the maple syrup in there. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Denise, what are you drinking? Well, uh, as you see, I love New Orleans so much. Um, I chose something not super typical, but kind of obvious at the same time. Um, I didn't want to go with the hurricane. I didn't want to go with the mint julep. I didn't want to go with the, the hand grenades that you get on uh, <laughs> Bourbon Street. So I chose something that was light and refreshing, but still kind of captures the essence, especially when you go to the cemeteries, knowing that uh, all the bodies are above ground. I went with a voodoo daiquiri. It has grape juice. It has bourbon and it has vodka in it. So it's not too heavy. It's actually light and it sneaks up on you. It's, it's really tasty. I love it. And I imagine when you're in New Orleans on those hot summer days when those, those clouds are rolling by and you're wondering if it's going to rain or are you going to burn to death from the sun, something refreshing. I also chose um, a pirate glass for the pirates on Pirate Alley and Mr. Lafitte himself. So this is my uh, voodoo daiquiri. Y'all, thanks so much. Lauren, can you tell us what the reward um, standing is now currently for the Kickstarter? Well, as of this morning, we've crossed the $4,000 line into, that was the seventh goal. So um, yeah, over the course of this Kickstarter, the backers have funded changing all the photos from black and white to color. Um, they've funded two additional essays that I'm going to commission for the book. Um, Oh, I'm trying to think of everything. It's, it's, it's done so much better than I expected. Uh, the most recent piece that we've added to that is uh, everybody funded uh, a second book. So everyone who's backed the campaign from the $5 level on up will get a second book, not only the um, desk garden book that they've paid for, but uh, an ebook of a sequel to my cemetery memoir. This one will be Still Wish You Were Here. And it's essays that I've written for Gothic Net, Gothic Beauty, um, Scouty Girl, which was a women's magazine online, um, Morbid Curiosity Magazine, a bunch of places, and then uh, some new things too. So my work cut out for me for the rest of the year. And then the next uh, stretch goal that we've got ahead of us is if we reach the $5,000 level, I'm going to contact one of the cemeteries in the area and yes, do our book release party in a cemetery. So that will be super cool. I need to go to the West Coast. <laughs> you need to come. Please. Yeah. <laughs> and then well, one of the things, I'm sorry, Sharon, but no. one more thing. One of the levels I'm super excited about, the tiers of rewards is... Um, for for five hundred dollars which is a lot of money i will meet you and four of your friends and we can go hang out in a cemetery in coma for in an afternoon um, because some there are no cemeteries in san francisco 
all the bodies were moved to Colma, which is just south of the city. So there are 17 cemeteries to choose from, uh, from a pet cemetery to several Jewish cemeteries, Chinese, Japanese, Serbian, um, a couple of garden cemeteries, an enormous Catholic cemetery. So, you know, if you've got four friends, I have a little bit of money, come out and hang out in the cemetery with me. And I want to say that when I checked this morning, somebody has already. Yes. You know, yeah. <laughs> they've yeah, chosen yeah, that. One of, one of the cemetery bloggers on uh, Instagram was within the first couple of days decided that she was going to do that. So we're already working out when they're going to come. I, that's really a good deal. Yeah. See, I mean, if I didn't have to fly to the West Coast, I would get my friends right. to do that. No question. Oh, we're going to keep chatting. And I just want to thank you all for coming. And I hope that our guest um, pay attention to the deadline, which is next Saturday, August 16th. It's in the morning West Coast time, noonish East Coast time, but you should probably just do it today when you're seeing yes. this video. Don't wait until the last minute. Don't forget. Um, so I'm going to drop that actually in the comments. So you'll, see, you'll have a direct link to the Kickstarter. And we hope to see you all in October when the book is released. Um, I just want to thank everyone. And I'm going to toast my guest raise our glasses. Thank you all for coming. Cheers. Thank you so much, Sharon. Cheers.